Drove all night, came at dawn to a warm, misty place, barking dogs and the sound of running water. Thomas and Charlie, I said. What? That's the name of this town. Sea level. We climbed straight up from here 10,000 feet. I took a fix and went to sleep in the back seat. She was a good driver, you can tell, as soon as someone touches the wheel. Mexico City, where Lupita sits like an Aztec earth goddess, doling out her little papers of lousy shit. Selling is more of a habit than using, Lupita says. Non-using pushers have a contact habit, and that's one you can't kick. Agents get it, too. Take Bradley the buyer, best narcotics agent in the industry. Anyone would make him for junk. I mean, you can walk up to a pusher and score direct. He is so anonymous, gray and spectral, the pusher don't remember him afterwards. So he twists one after the other. Well, the buyer comes to look more and more like a junkie. He can't drink. He can't get it up. His teeth fall out. He's all the time sucking on a candy bar. Baby Ruth, he digs special. It really disgusts you to see the bar sucking on them candy bars so nasty, a cop says. The bar takes on an ominous gray-green color. Fact is, his body is making its own junk or equivalent. The buyer has a steady connection. A man within, you might say, or so he thinks. I'll just sit in my room, he says. Fuck them all. Squares on both sides. I am the only complete man in the industry. But a yen comes on him like the great black wind through the bones. So the buyer hunts up a young junkie and gives him a paper to make it. Oh, all right, the boy says. So what you want to make? I just want to rub up against you and get fixed. Ugh, well, all right, but why can't you just get physical like a human? Later, the boy is sitting in a Waldorf with two colleagues dunking pound cake. Most distasteful thing I ever stand still for, he says. Some way, he make himself all soft like a blob of jelly and surround me so nasty. Then he gets wet all over like with green slime, so I guess he come to some kind of awful climax. I come there wigging with that green stuff all over me, and he stinks like an old rotten cantaloupe. Well, it's still an easy score. The boy sighed resignedly. Yes, I guess you can get used to anything. I've got to meet with him again tomorrow. Well, the buyer's habit keeps getting heavier. He needs a recharge every half hour. Sometimes he cruises the precincts and bribes the turnkey to let him in with a cell of junkies. Gets where no amount of contact will fix him. At this point, he receives a summons from the district supervisor. Bradley, your conduct has given rise to rumors, and I hope for your sake that they are no more than that. So unspeakably distasteful that, I mean, uh, Caesar's wife, <clears throat> that is, the department, must be above suspicion. Certainly above such suspicions as you have seemingly aroused. You are lowering the entire tone of the industry. We are prepared to accept your immediate resignation. The buyer throws himself on the ground and crawls over to the DS. No, boss man, no. The department is my very lifeline. He kisses the district supervisor's hand, thrusting his fingers into his mouth. The DS must feel his toothless gums, complaining he has lost his teeth in a thurbot. Please, boss man, I'll wipe your ass. I'll wash out your dirty condoms. I'll polish your shoes with the oil on my nose. Really, this is most distasteful. Have you no pride? I must tell you I feel a distinct revulsion. I mean, there is something well rotten about you. You smell like a compost heap. He put a scented handkerchief in front of his face. I must ask you to leave this office at once. I'll do anything, boss. Anything. His ravaged green face splits in a horrible smile. I'm still young, boss, and I'm pretty strong when I get my blood up. The DS retches into his handkerchief and points to the door with a limp hand. The buyer stands up, looking at the DS dreamily. His body begins to dip like a dowser's wand. He flows forward. No, no, screams the DS. Slup, slup, slup. An hour later, they find the buyer on the nod in the DS's chair. 
The DS has disappeared without a trace. The judge. Everything indicates that you have, in some unspeakable manner, uh, simulated the district supervisor. Unfortunately, there is no proof. I would recommend that you be confined or more accurately contained in some institution, but I know of no place suitable for a man of your caliber. I must reluctantly order your release. That one should stand in an aquarium, says the arresting officer. The buyer spreads terror throughout the industry. Junkies and agents disappear like a vampire bat. He gives off a narcotic effluvium, a dank green mist that anesthetizes his victims and renders them helpless in his enveloping presence. And once he is scored, he holds up for several days like a gorged bull constrictor. Finally, he's caught in the act of digesting the narcotics commissioner and destroyed with a flamethrower. The court of inquiry ruling that such means were justified in that the buyer had lost his human citizenship and was, in consequence, a creature without species and a menace to the narcotics industry on all levels.